Welcome to the Pitcher Nail Down. I'm here with Russell and Zach. Jason here, taking a look at pitching for tonight's 11-game slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, definitely some quality arms up top, um, and definitely some big guys going, but overall pretty weak as far as value goes, in my opinion. Jason Worth, am I right? Yeah, I mean, if, if you haven't been following, I mean, people have just been ripping Russell for his back-to-back -back Worth home, home run games, and, and Rush just saying he hates Jason Worth. Yeah, this was not a good stretch for, for the Clay brand, that's for sure, but uh, we have a strategy. We're going to recover from this, and uh, I'll be making an official press conference um, later in the day. <laughs> And you haven't known, I mean, Zach, I think we should just kind of let the public know whenever you go to Nationals games that something crazy does happen. Yes, I go to the Nationals game a lot, and something, Harper either going to hit a bunch of bombs, there's going to be a lot of run scores. Yeah. So I'll let you know next time, Russ. Yeah, please do, because I, I don't need any more Jason Worth. Uh, I can't be hating Jason Worth anymore. You know, he has like a... He has like a 60-game on base streak or something crazy yeah. like that. How can you hate him anyway? Because he failed me like once or twice in a row against <laughs> against that <team. laughs> So the the process um, tells me that after in baseball, like a guy does bad for you twice in a row, you're supposed to hate him. That's that's <laughs> my process. So. <laughs> Looking at pitching today, uh, Pirates and Brewers, the first one here. You got Jamison Talion versus Jimmy Nelson. Uh, obviously, both these offenses are fairly kind of boomer bust. Uh, Talion's a guy who I don't mind um, in today's slate, but obviously, I think it's a little bit uh, site dependent. I like his price a little bit more on FanDuel, where he's cheaper. DraftKings, he feels a little bit overpriced, but there certainly is some strikeout upside uh, against this Brewers team. Yeah, certainly love that price more on FanDuel. He still is in play on DK just because I think you can get, you know, a little weird with the salaries and, and some of the stacks you can look at. But um, I, I do like this. Obviously, you like the strikeout rate of the Brewers. And, I mean, I'm certainly going to be throwing him in some tournaments. I like Italian in all formats. I mean, he's one of the – Ben Bone, one of the best pitchers since he came mm. off the DL. He has a whip under one, an ERA of 2.35. The Brewers aren't a very good hitting team. Like everybody mentioned, they strike out a lot. FanDuel, of course, you want to play him at his price. DraftKings, he's kind of blah, but FanDuel, he's my top dollar for dollar pitcher. Yeah, I do like one FanDuel. And as you mentioned, DK, I mean, they're certainly in play, and I'm with you. I think all formats is, is definitely there. I mean, look, he's a decent shot at a win. Um, Jimmy Nelson's a guy on the other side who I'm not really a big fan of. Uh, and with the way he's been pitching of lately, I mean, had a decent start against Colorado, but before that was really struggling. Um, I just feel like he's going to have a little bit of a tough time against his Pittsburgh offense. Yeah, I mean, which <laughs> Pittsburgh's also on my uh, my 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 bad list. But, uh, yeah, no, certainly not going at Jimmy Nelson in any format for me. I don't think that's viable at this stage with what we've seen from him. Yeah, I'm not on Nelson, even though he has some – some pretty decent home numbers, but regression's been coming. It has to come. If you look at a SIP, it's almost two runs higher than its ERA. So the regression's mm -hmm. coming. Pittsburgh's not a great offense, but Nelson just... I used to look forward to Jimmy Nelson Day. Not anymore. He's off my radar <laughs> completely for the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of how you have to play it right now. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Uh, Phillies and Mets, next one here, Jeremy Hellickson versus Noah Syndergaard. Uh, Mets minus 208 favorites. I think Syndergaard's kind of going to be your top pay-up option here going up against the Phillies. Team yeah. dominated early this season. It, easy, Russ. You want to jump oh, in sorry. on the Syndergaard or what? My connection or your connection jumped out, and I didn't hear you, so I was ready to, I was ready to jump in. I, I am excited about the Syndergaard play, though. Obviously going to be super chalky, but I mean... This this is a pretty easy cash play in my opinion. I don't care about price in this scenario. Phillies projected between two and a half and three runs wherever you're looking. Syndergaard pitching well the last two starts after sort of a, a little lull in the season. I'm I'm in. Um, I think this is easy cash no matter what. Yeah, in cash games, Thor is your top pitcher. There's nothing else you can say. He's coming off a great start. Yeah. Phillies are bad. He's at home. I don't see how he's not your top pitcher on the slate in any format. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I mean, it, it, his, his price, obviously, FanDuel, or uh, DraftKings 12-3 is up there, but it's something you're going to be looking to pay up for in cash games. It's something that's really hard to fade, especially with a lot of other of those top guys not really in the most perfect of spots. Syndergaard's kind of the easy one there. Yep. 
Uh, as far as Hellickson goes on the other side, I mean, this guy, is, he's pitched relatively well at times this year. Um, struggles a little bit with lefties, which there are a ton of in this Mets lineup. Uh, I feel like he's a bit overpriced, though, and I'm just kind of looking to stay away. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too keen on targeting him with the the middle of that Mets order right now. Um so I, I think I think that's a fade for now pretty easy. Yeah, if his price was cheaper I would like him cuz he is pitching well and Mets aren't I mean they're not anything that scares you away from anybody, but with the other options on this slate, his pitching his he's just too expensive for me. There's way better options. Yeah, I think so, and that's that's kind of the deciding factor. I mean, 8,700 on DK. Fandle, you can make a case for him, but I kind of like Talion in that range as well, so he kind of takes the cake over him there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I I mean, on Fandle, you are kind of looking for that 12-point win bonus, which does help out, because Helixson, he kind of needs that a little bit if he doesn't have the strikeout game really working. Uh, Padres and Marlins next here. Jose Urena versus Clayton Richard. Um these games, I mean, both these guys feature two pitchers that I don't feel like using. Uh, I mean, they're both very cheap. I can't see myself taking a stab at them. I kind of feel like there's a lot of mid-range guys I'd just rather sit with. Are, are, do we just throw any pitcher against the Padres at this stage? Like, we, we've kind of seen what Urena does in good starts, sort of looking at that, like, 15 to 17 point range. Is that something we can, like reasonably expect if we want to pay up for an expensive stack, or is this just a no-go? I mean, I don't know. I don't even know what to make of this game. Like, if you look at both pitchers yeah. in the matchups, they're both positive matchups. Both pitchers have had good games. I mean, Richard in his first two starts has been a, he's only given up two runs, but they're both blah pitchers. They shouldn't be doing what they're doing, so I don't even know what to make of this start. I'm personally... I don't know. I honestly don't know what I'm doing in this game right now. Yeah, like clearly clearly they're not cash options, but I I don't know. If you do want to fit some really expensive stacks on DK in there, maybe look at a Urena, but don't get too excited about it either. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think what we're obviously I think we can probably be in agreement. This is strictly DK as an SP two spot oh, because they yeah, are so cheap. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I guess I won't knock it in a tournament, um, but I, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable. I I will avoid it if I can. But if there's something where I do want to pay for a stack and it fits, okay, I, I'll I'll allow it. Right. E- exactly. That that defines it perfectly. I think I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> Royals and Red Sox next here. Danny Duffy versus David Price. Two lefties on the hill here. Uh, obviously, two offenses that I mean, the Royals middle of the road against lefties have always been been trending downwards, but they have been kind of hot in terms of winning uh, of late. Um, Price is a guy who's been so up and down. He gives up a ton of hits. Um, still not not an expensive option in comparison to some of the other guys. I mean, he is you know a twenty three hundred dollar discount from Cindergard. I don't mind either either of these guys in GPP formats, um, but I think their upside is a little bit capped more than usual tonight. Yeah, certainly a little more capped than usual. I still like Price. He's obviously been pitching well coming off that pitch against the Rays. Uh, um, start against the Rays. I don't know what a pitch... Uh, if he threw one pitch against the Rays, that'd be probably not a good start, I, I'd imagine. Um, but, yeah, no. Obviously, upside's a little limited against this sort of annoying Royals lineup, but... Their upside is really capped, and um, overall, I, I like this price for him. I'm, I'm kind of blah on price. He's just he's he's a great pitcher, but I'm either spending up to Thor or spending down. It's just price is just kind of in an in between range for me, just like Duffy. Like they're great GPP options because they're going to be low on, but mm. I don't think they're going to be in the top three, top four of scoring pitchers on the slate in. I feel you can get the same production for cheaper. Yeah, that definitely is something to consider. I mean, both sitting there in that 10K range, um, and there's no real clear-cut favorite. I mean, I, I obviously I think you probably lean on maybe uh, the Boston offense getting to Duffy a little bit more than you with the Royals getting to Price. Um, but as we know, Price does go deep into the games, but he does allow a ton of hits. I always kind of like him more on Fanduel because I feel like one, if he gets that one, it's nice, and also you're not getting all those walks and hits counted against you on DK. It kind of can limit him if he doesn't have the strikeouts going. You guys ever heard of this Dustin Pedroia guy? He's been doing pretty well of late. Yeah, but, but no he one else stinks against him. lefties. 
<laughs> I know. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling in the same way with, with Duffy here, just kind of like they said. Um, tournaments, I think this is a good tournament game, but overall, um, not really looking at it for cash. Angels and Tigers next year, Michael Fulmer versus Brett Oberholzer. And Fulmer's a guy who's obviously, overall numbers are very solid. I have a little bit of concern for his price tag. I don't think the upside's quite there against this Angels team. I mean, I know he had a decent start against them earlier this year, but I feel like Fulmer's been a guy who, a little bit up and down, I, I do feel like he's kind of catching up with them. I mean, obviously the start against the, the Rangers was something that was a plus for him. I don't kind of see him reproducing his, his start from earlier against the Angels. I guess I'm just kind of off of him for the price. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't totally mind the price, um, but I'm also not totally targeting him either. He's kind of that wishy-washy tournament range. So I, I do like the matchup overall, but um, not someone I'm looking to get like full exposure to or anything like that. On Fanduel, I don't mind him because he's a huge favorite to win, and strikeouts don't mean a lot because the Angels they don't strike out. I mean, yeah. At all. I mean, I think a T-ball team strikes out more than the Angels do. I certainly struck out more in in first grade, let me tell you what. So I think think in FanDuel, he's a great cash game option, not GPP because he is such a huge favorite. But in DraftKings, over 10,000, just he's going to give up a couple hits. I mean, he's not going to strike out enough. It's just there's nothing worth it for me on DraftKings. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the, the pricing difference, as you described, I mean, 8400 certainly much more reasonable play on FanDuel because, I mean, he has been a little bit rocky, and, and the Angels obviously don't allow a, a high upside, you know, to, to pitchers like Fulmer, who obviously has been solid, um, but the strikeout rate is a little bit more near average uh, than kind of some of the other guys you face. Yeah. On, on the other side, uh, Brett Olwerholtz, or lefty there, uh, although the Tigers have been boomer bust against lefties, I, I'm kind of intrigued with actually just stacking the Tigers and moving on here. Uh, yeah, I think that's the correct way to play this, in my opinion. Yeah, just just play Kubera like Clay's going to say later and just move on. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Bitters and White Sox next year, uh, another game year. you got two lefties, Ariel Miranda versus Jose Quintana. Um, obviously, the Mariners against lefties. Uh, they have a couple right-handed bats to worry about. Obviously, Cruz, Gutierrez, uh, Zunino, who's been hitting well. Um, but overall, against lefties, haven't been that great. Um Quintana's another guy who I, I do feel like is a little bit overpriced. I don't mind him on DraftKings. Um, 9100 I feel like I'd just kind of rather go to a lot of other options on FanDuel. Yeah, um, I agree on, on DK. It's sort of like in that range where I don't want to play him in cash. I do think there's a nice tournament upside here. Um, if, if you do play Quintana, I feel like you'd want to play a lineup with uh, Gutierrez and Cruz as, as leverage plays on him, but... Um, Overall, I, I think he's an interesting tournament guy. I like him. I mean, I like him in all formats. I don't actually really like him in tournaments because he doesn't, I don't know, he just doesn't strike out enough for, batter for me. In tournaments, I'm looking at strictly K upside. I don't see it with him. And the Marlins only have a team K rate in the 21, 22% range, which isn't great. So in cash games, I don't mind them, but I'm just going to go to a cheaper option personally. I mean, I could see I could see six strikeouts out of him. I mean, if he's got to go further into the game um, for him to get that, but I mean, that's certainly something I, I could see as an option tonight. Um, and I do think uh, it's hard to trust a White Sox offense to back him with run support. But uh, Miranda, obviously not a lefty, I'm looking at target, so I feel like he could come away with a win. Mm. How much deeper does Quintana need to go in the game? He's gone at least seven, listen, six listen. innings. Listen, bro, Chris Sale did a complete (laughs) game in a loss yesterday. No, I mean, he's gone seven innings in his past ten starts, so I know. I know. Where does he need to go? No, no, I know. That's what I'm saying. But, I mean, if he goes that, I I do think six six strikeouts is certainly reasonable for him. I mean, you look at his past starts. I mean, he is obviously a guy who sits in the three, four, five strikeout range, um, and you do look for a little bit more upside. But I, I do think six or seven is certainly reasonable against his Mariners offense. Yeah, I'll give you that, but he just blotted me. As far as Miranda goes, I mean, I hinted at earlier, he's a guy I'm not looking to use. Another cheap guy. I'd rather just take a stab if I am going in the 4K range with one of those Marlins or Padres guys. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. 
I don't I don't know what to make of Miranda. I've seen him pitch many times in person. He looked a lot better in AAA than he has now, which is par for the course. But he's a good pitcher. I just don't want him right now. Maybe in a year or two. Yes. Uh, raising Astros next year, Dallas Keuchel versus Blake Snell. Um, obviously, Keuchel here is in a decent spot against this Rays offense. It's really trending downwards against lefties. And also, given that fact that they have that 26% strikeout rate against southpaws, Keuchel's got to be a pretty friendly guy to target as far as the mid-range goes. Um, for me, I like him in all formats. Uh, definitely some strikeout upside for tournaments. Good shot at a win here. Um, and he's also, he has pitched better at home. So I'd venture to guess this would be a guy Zach's looking at for tournaments instead of Quintana. I'm not looking at him at all. Oh. Every time I play him, he's on, he's on my not-to-play list because ah. every time he has a good start, you get back on his bandwagon, and then he blows up. I'm calling it right now. He's going to yeah. blow up again. I like it. Everybody's on his bandwagon. Don't there play we go. him. He's going to blow up. We're stoking the coals, baby. <laughs> Let's get this show going. Um, no, I obviously he's been super inconsistent this year. Um, I do I do like him as a tournament guy. Um, I don't think I don't I don't really like Snell here. I think uh, Astros are going to give him some nice run support. So chance at a win, especially on FanDuel, pretty good here. Yeah, I think so too. Um... Snell's a guy who I actually I don't hate. The, the only problem with rostering him is, is he just walks way too many guys. Um, and you look at this Astros team, I mean, they can be somewhat impatient at time, which may help, but rostering Snell is, is completely frustrating to watch because he just has these 20, 25 pitch innings, and it's just brutal to just sit there. And I, I Personally, I just can't stomach that, so I'm kind of staying off of him. I, I like Keuchel. Um, he's a guy who I'll be looking to use a lot of tonight. Other than a guy hitting a home run that you have no exposure to, I think those 20 to 25 pitch innings from pitchers are, like, the worst feeling as, as like, a, a DFS guy. Like, you have a lot of exposure to a guy. Hopefully it's not Blake Snell, but those innings are just... I, I die inside, I think, each time. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I think the worst is when your pitcher goes seven innings without giving up a run, and then the bullpen blows and you don't get the bonus points for the win. That's or, the worst to me. Or you start Estrada and he gives up like four runs in the first. That's a pretty bad feeling too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your take on Snell tonight, Zach? You can pass. I mean, everything y'all said, I mean, he might only pitch two innings because he's going to throw 80 pitches in the first two innings. I mean, you just never know with him. Yeah. No, it's exactly how I feel. I mean, he's a guy who I, in certain matchups, you can look to use, but I don't think tonight's one of them. A's and Cardinals next here, Zach Neal versus Alex Reyes. Uh, Alex Reyes is obviously an interesting guy to talk about because obviously he's uh, one of the highly touted prospects for the Cardinals. Mm. 7,400 gets a reasonable matchup here at home against the A's. Um, him, obviously, I, I think he could be a playable GPP option at 7,400, and I feel like this year alone we've had quite a bit of our, our Major League debuts, and that's where Reyes is going to sit tonight. So it's always a little bit risky, um, but I do like him, and the A's have been striking out a little bit more of late. Um, so I'm okay with actually targeting him at tournaments. I agree. I mean, if you're making, like, three tournament lineups, you probably don't want to, you know, go here. But if you're making, you know, quite a few, I think this is an interesting way to go, especially at that price. It's going to open up a lot. Um, A's certainly haven't been the most intimidating offense against righties this year. Obviously, you got Vought there, but other than that, I mean, I'm not really worried about Yonder Alonso. I don't know about you guys. Uh, how do you not play him on Fandle? His yeah. price is 4500 He allows yeah. you to do whatever you want, and yeah. he's a stud pitcher. He doesn't – normally pitchers making their starting debut bother me, but since he's pitched out of bullpen, I'm not that bothered. He's not going to pitch deep into the game, but as long as he pitches five innings and gets me the win with his strikeout stuff at 4500 I'm sorry. I'm going to have about 9,000% exposure to him in GPPs. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you look at what he does. He allows you 3,800 left per batter after you plug him in. Um, so it's definitely a viable option, and the Cardinals are decent favorites there. I expect often, Neil, that, that they can get some decent run support for Reyes, and if he gets to five, I, I certainly see him having a good shot at a win. With all this said, do we think he might be not chalky in GPPs, but maybe like 15 to 20 percent? With, at that price? Or He's going to be not? over. He's going to be over because people are going to see the price tag. Yeah, and I'm talking about the casual player. 
If we're right. talking in a GPP where you get more casual players, mm-hmm. they're going to see that price tag and they're just going to play him so they can load up on hitters they know. So That's I think great. he's going to be in a, a 30 point. to 35% range. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Uh, and Neil on the other side, not a guy who I'm looking to use. Uh, easy guy to fade for me. Yeah. I agree that the Cardinals, they just kill right-handed pitch and just leave them on the bench. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Indians and Rangers next here. Carlos Carrasco versus AJ Griffin. Uh, Carrasco has been a guy who's pitched very uh, well of late. Obviously, runs into a tougher mm. matchup. I don't mind him in GPPs actually. I this Rangers offense, it's a bold call out of the top guys. But I think if I'm making a pivot, I think Carrasco is going to be a guy I might look to deal with uh, because this Rangers offense is a team that runs kind of hot and cold. And I know they're deep, and obviously the Luke Roy trade adds another depth or another layer to their lineup. But um, they're not the most intimidating offense still. I know this is a bad ballpark, but Cresco has pitched well on the road. Uh, and you've seen him pitch in bad spots before and come away with a pretty high upside. Yeah, and the good thing about him of late is the strikeout rate's up. I mean, over eight strikeouts in each of the last four starts. A- against some mediocre offenses, but, um, I mean, I'd kind of consider, you know... I don't know what to do with this Rangers team. This is kind of a tournament. This has tournament written all over it for me. Um, I like Carrasco, but I could definitely see and see him giving up some runs for sure. If this was at Cleveland, I wouldn't touch him, but because of his road splits, you have to look at him. His whip is 0.77. His ERA is ridiculous. His K rate's at 28%. Per- Point seven percent. I don't like the matchup. I don't like the ballpark, but his numbers on the road are amazing, so you have to look at him. And I think that's what's going to drive that ownership down is because, you know, it, it looks like a bad, which it is a bad matchup. It's not a good matchup for Carrasco, yeah. but on the road in a bad ballpark, people are just going to look at that and kind of instantly fade, especially when you have guys like like uh, Syndergaard up there, and you have guys like Price, Talion, Keiko, all kind of below him. He just sits in that middle range where I think he's going to get completely overlooked. I agree. As far as Griffin goes on the other side, uh, not a guy who I'm looking to use. I mean, uh, Indians against right-handed pitching is something I love to just target, and Griffin's a guy who, um, not the most consistent option, struggles with lefties. I certainly am fading here. Yeah, and and again, we were joking yesterday, but um, the Indians under 20K for the top four bats is always something you get excited about against a righty, you know? Yeah, because usually they are 5K plus on DraftKings. <laughs> yeah, I'm not using Griffin. I thought he was pitching yesterday for some reason, so I'm skipping him. I was skipping him yesterday. I'm definitely skipping him now that he's actually pitching. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Reds and Diamondbacks here, Anthony Descafani versus Zach Godley. This game last night was frustrating for me because I was not expecting a low-scoring game for most of it uh, up until like the later part of the innings. Here, uh, two right-handers uh, that I don't really look to touch at Chase Field. Um, obviously, the Reds' offense is certainly not a good one, um, but Godley is not a good right-hander that I'm looking to use. No, yeah, I think we're looking at our uh, Avado Duval sort of mini-stack there at the very least, so I'm not looking at Godley. Um, as far as Desclafani goes, if anything, this is just going to make me not stack the Diamondbacks, not necessarily play him. So that's kind of how I'm looking at that. I'm just probably not going to get much exposure to this game. Yeah, I treat Chase Field almost like I treat, cool- treat coolers now, so I don't really target pitchers against them. It's, it's just a really, really bad park for pictures. I mean, look at Zach Greinke, for goodness sake. Look at his splits. That's all you need to know. It really is crazy. He's been bad at home this year. Yeah, no, it's certainly one where you do look to fade mostly all the time pitchers here uh, in Chase Field. Braves and Giants won here. Uh, Jake Peavy versus Mike Fultinowitz. Uh, Giants minus 170 favorites. Peavy obviously went to the pen. Before he went to the pen, he was pitching relatively well. I was actually surprised that he was the guy when they when they left Matt Cain to the lineup or uh, in the rotation. Um, Peavy's a guy who obviously I think is going to enjoy the home ballpark here. Um, the Braves haven't been quite as friendly, um, but I could actually see Peavy having a decent start and getting a win here. Um, more of a DraftKings play than anything at 6K. I'm not really looking at him on FanDuel. I think there's far better, cheaper options. Yeah, um, if you don't like any of the other cheaper options, I suppose PV is a a nice alternative, but I think I, I have a few preferred options at the bottom over him. Um, it, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. 
I don't like how the Braves have been hit right-handers lately. I mean, Freeman is red hot. Yeah. Some of the other left-handed bats are hitting them, hitting right as well. I mean, just look at their numbers. Their numbers have jumped like crazy over the past two weeks. They're no longer last in everything. So, and they were way last in everything. So I don't, I'm not messing with PV right now, even with the ballpark. I just, I don't know. There's just so many cheap options on the slate. Why risk it? No, I definitely could see that. I mean, Braves have been better. I mean, as we've seen over the past, if you've used average pitching against them, it hasn't really paid no. off. Um, yeah, right. So that's, so that's been a theme in the second half. Uh, as far as Foltinowitz goes, uh, he's a guy who I'm not really looking to use. I know this Giants offense is kind of a lackluster offense, but uh, so is Foltinowitz for me. And he struggles way too much with lefties for me to just kind of go about, uh, given the fact that they have about four or five that I actually just want to use tonight. Yeah, and and again today for the Giants, it's it's like the Crawford Belt panic, you know, at the end of that lineup are really what you worry about for the 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 weak righty here, you know. I agree. I'm not. I mean, I don't know. I don't like any of the Braves pitchers really, so yeah. none of them stand out to me. No, nah, this yeah, definitely an easy easy fade there. Let's wrap things up with the pitcher nail down. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for our great tools and content.